Uh, the question becomes, where do I install the sequencer boards? There's a lot of big open space here. And I was thinking that if you trim down this edge, you could pr I could pretty much attach it to one side or the other or directly onto the uh, metal bolt here. However, if you're looking through from the other side, from this angle, you're going to see a shadow, and I really want full all-around lighting, so there can't be any interruptions in this wide open area here. However, I could lay a flat sequencer down underneath if I need to. Over here on this wall, this tube pretty much eliminates the chance of putting this board here simply because it'll be far too far out. But maybe if all of this was soldered on to the other side of the board, I just might be able to fit it there. Actually, you know, that could be a spot right there, potentially. So there's one. This is an obvious one, just sliding this right in here. I'll have to take the stands off in this case, but that could just be set in place. And there's even a hole in here so I can route the wires through, but to the bottom of that. So definitely one there and one other possible. Here, the fiber optics coming out of the wall are just going to be in the way, and it's not going to be wide enough because you need this whole area for the board. And being so close to this wasp's nest, I don't want to uh, set anything off. Next up is this back room. If you don't build a back room for yourself, then you don't have to worry about this because this is wide open area. However, if I solder one board onto this side, except for the ICs, which must go on this side, I can attach that board to this area here with no problem. There's also a slot here that I'll be able to attach the board to. So there's two definites and two possibles. And again, if I have it wired, well, no, nope, not quite. The fiber optics coming out of this wall panel would block putting a board there. However, there's no reason why you can't just attach a board right in the middle here. In fact, I'm going to keep that open as an option. So there's three definites and two or three possibilities for places to put a sequencer board like this alone. So at that point, it's just going to be a matter of figuring out how long the wires need to be coming off of this to get the LEDs underneath to where they need to be. So what I might do is cut a generic length of one foot to make sure that any wire can get anywhere. However, uh, nah, that's probably the safe way to play it, I bet. One foot wire leads for everything. But I don't need to get those wire leads yet. What I first need to do is turn on the soldering iron. The solder I'm using, uh, which is from Modeler's brand, should melt around 280 Celsius, but I keep mine running just a little hotter to get a little faster melting and uh, warming action on the components. Sometimes it seems like a component will heat up really nice and fast and take solder really well. Other times it seems like I need the iron needs to sit there for too long a time to get any heat going. So I'm going to break these two, well, I'm going to break one of these boards out. We'll do this one at a time. And get these soldering. Now step one for me at this point is going to be drilling all the holes out here. Got my Tamiya handy drill ready to go. No need to go fast, take it easy. If the holes you drill for the chips are a little off, it's okay. You can always bend the legs into place. However, too far off is no good at all. And you can't re-drill a second hole too close to the other that'll still work. I've tried using the Dremel, but it's even at its slowest, it's far too fast. The slightest wobble can destroy any of the traces on the board here. There are a couple spots on the board that are actually uh, rectangular. What you need for them is to drill two holes close to side by side, and then kind of work away the middle. One way to check your board to see if you're getting everything is to hold it up to the light. 
and check all the holes for traces and see which holes don't have any light coming through them. This rectangle of all the negative leads could be a good place to practice for your first drill holes. There's a lot of them close together so you get a lot of practice. It doesn't matter if you mess up because it's still going to contact the huge copper pad and it gives you some target practice. What I've recently taken to doing is, I've got this old motherboard box, put a telephone book in it, and all your sanding and stuff is going to go to the surrounding box where you can collect it, vacuum it out, shake it out, do whatever, but you don't have to worry about it getting all over the place while you're working. It's much better contained. Just smooth these out a little. Now, uh, I'm going to cut a little of the board down to make it a little easier to wield. You can certainly use a normal scissors for this, I just don't happen to have one on hand. <laughs> 